What's shaking, Navigation Nation? Friday, April 23rd, here with your pro members weekend update. Today is Friday, April 23rd. Hope everybody had a good week. Let's take a quick look at the markets, give you an update on the day trades, and then we'll go through all of the alerts and the current income portfolio. So starting, starting with the markets, looking at the S&P 500. Uh, Thursday had this little bitty sell-off right here. Uh, look like the markets might get a little bit heavy due to the proposed tax hike by the administration. Uh, I was actually looking for potentially a little bit more downside, but did not happen. What did happen? Ripped back up to new all-time highs. Hit a new all-time high today. Closed just under that. And so it looks like uh, the market, like it has been doing, is just going to shake this off and keep on trucking higher. So that's the S&P. Taking a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ not quite back up to all-time highs, but just under. And the Russell, a little bit weaker. Still just kind of in a choppy choppy mode down here, but not too far off the highs either. Uh, if we take a look at some of the other assets, uh, notably bonds. Been watching the bond market pretty closely as it was just in kind of a free fall for a while there as interest rates were ticking higher. It uh, looks to have stabilized, at least for the time being, and is starting to grind back up. Bonds having that inverse correlation to interest rates, so interest rates starting to come back down as its bonds going up. Uh, Natty Gas, just kind of back and forth, some, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit wild swings. I've also been watching, I also just put on a position in a different account, but I'm watching this and may add one in the alerts portfolio as well, but the, uh, the grains, uh, notably soybeans has just been on a, an absolute tear big move up consolidation for a couple months and now ripping higher again uh there's no there's no real liquid etf to get an accurate reading of the implied volatility but the options are pr high priced in here so selling some premium uh might be warranted just remember the the commissions on these grains are quite a bit higher so just watch that depending on what your who your broker is so We'll look for that in the potential coming weeks. Uh, maybe do an iron condor or sell some premium in soybeans. Uh, so that's a quick glance at the markets. Oils, uh, oil is uh, just been kind of chopping around. Had that big sell-off, but then just pretty, uh, pretty much consolidating since then. Uh, and then lastly, gold and silver are on the uptick as well. After a big sell-off, they've been kind of bouncing bouncing higher as well, but premium is pretty uh, pretty sparse, meaning the implied volatility is pretty low. Obviously an SPX, got the IV percentile, IV rank down under 10. Uh, same with the NASDAQ, uh, the Russell, uh, pretty low as well. And then if we take a look at you know some of the other assets like gold, I mean, everything's so low and, and obviously Overall, the VIX, which is the volatility of the SPX, uh, pretty low as well. Looking at a one-year chart down here near pre-pandemic levels still. Starting to get that little pop yesterday uh, with the tax hike news, but reversed course and popped uh, and came right back down. So still dealing with low implied volatility. So we still will continue to do some um, directional plays. Just remember, keep your position size small. Uh, directional plays are much lower probability plays, but looking for opportunities. And we'll go over uh, a few of those that we have in our portfolio. And then next week, don't forget, big earnings week. All the big tech stocks coming out with earnings. You've got Apple on 428, Amazon on 429, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, same days. Uh, Tesla is actually on Monday. I believe Tesla's on Monday. Yeah, 426 after the market closed. So a lot of the big boys starting to announce next week. So we'll be getting in some earnings plays and uh, and look forward to taking advantage of that as well. So that's a quick look at the markets. Let's take a, a quick update on the day trading. Big week this week, over 6,500 in profits. Uh, over half of that came on Thursday with the sell-off. Uh, we took advantage of that uh, t uh, proposed tax increase when the market sold off, jumped on that train, and booked a bunch of profits on uh, on Thursday. But uh, all five days were green this week, 
and then going back to uh, Friday. So that's six green days in a row. So hopefully we'll look to build on that streak next week. Uh, you can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday is becoming our most profitable day of the week to trade. Uh, more details on this in the Profit Channel and Discord. I go over a weekly recap of just the day trading in there. So just wanted to give you a quick update. Let's jump into the alerts in the income portfolio. Starting with Monday, our first trade was an opening trade. We opened up an iron duck in rut. Did this one with 14 days to expiration. So let's take a look at our buddy rut and see where we're at with that one. Obviously a big update today, up about one and three quarters of a percent. Uh, and so this one has already run all the way up the beak, almost, almost maxing out the beak profit, but we've still got uh, between now and May 4th, still got about a 20% chance it could get back into the duck head. So if this keeps on creeping higher and uh, doesn't look like we got much of a chance getting back, we'll go ahead and close that out early for beak profit. In this case, $137 would be that profit there. So that's rut. Next trade was an opening trade in Netflix. So we did an earnings iron duck in Netflix and put this on with just that three days to expiration like we do with these earnings plays. Uh, Netflix had a, let me get on Netflix. Netflix had a, a, an announcement that their subscribers did not meet expectations. You can see this was the expected move here. Open just below the expected move. And, um, uh, but overnight it was actually down, way down here. So. Uh, while we did close this out and, and take a little loss, it could have been much worse, but it bounced back just before the market opened. I know some of the folks held it a little, little bit longer. When it creeped up here, they got out at, uh, at no loss too. So hopefully that was the case for you. We, we did just close it out, take a loss uh, because it was, it was below our, our um, it opened up below our exit point. So we just closed it out, staying mechanical. Uh, next trade, opening trade in Goog, did a long call diagonal. Now, Google is one of the companies that has earnings coming up, and this is on 427. So we will be closing this trade out before earnings, before uh, probably on 427 if we don't hit our profit target. So if we take a look at Goog, Google has been just really strong, just continuing, you know, minor, very minor pullbacks here. Here is earnings uh, last cycle opened up above the expected move, never traded back below that level, just kind of chopped around, chopped around, and then it exploded higher. It's been kind of chopping around. And so we're looking for another potential upside momentum move coming into that earnings announcement. Uh, kind of like the concept that we teach in the earnings course about doing pre-earnings long calls with some of these big tech stocks, getting that upside momentum into earnings. Uh, Google's expensive though. I mean, it's a $2,300 stock. So buying calls was a little bit frothy for the size of the alerts portfolio that we that we're doing here so we did a long call diagonal you can see we're up about 170 bucks on that trade with a max risk max buying power of 543 so if we get a little bit of a pop higher we should be able to book somewhere 50 you know if we get a big pop maybe even 100 percent uh profit on this but we will see let's see if we get some more upside momentum early next week but again we'll take this off uh prior to earnings Next trade, that was the closing trade in Netflix, that earnings duck. SPY opened up a new vertigo with implied volatility contracting. We went ahead and put this one on. Did this one with nine days in the front, 12 in the back. So if we take a look at SPY, click on our position here. So you can see we're starting to get a little sag here. It's pretty, pretty close to where we put it on. Actually, price was actually over here when we put it on. Price has moved higher. Now it's pretty much uh, centered. So if we get some more momentum ripping higher or if things end up falling apart, still got a chance, uh, you know, with these, you know, this is, uh, if we set the expiration date to 5-1 and you, so you can see this is the expected move. So there's still a really good chance. It, even staying inside the expected move, we could still book a nice profit on this trade and we'll take this off, uh, you know, a day, probably the day before earnings, which would be, which would be by the 29th, uh, but still a good chance we could make a move to get into some profit here. So still holding that one till you, we like to take those off at one DTE, uh, holding them to expiration. If you're anywhere close to here can be problematic because that 
P&L can really start to sag at that point, and we do not like saggy diapers, as uh, one of our friends in the community likes to say. Uh, CMG opening trade did an earnings, I should say earnings iron duck, did an earnings iron duck in CMG, and we just took that off today for a near max profit. So if you take a look at CMG on the chart, uh, you can see price, um, uh, this is where price closed before earnings, and then it came right down into our duck head, and we maxed that one out. We bought it back for like 20 cents. So very nice trade in CMG, almost $600 on that one. Uh, Rut Iron Duck, this one expired in the beak. Booked a beak profit on that one. Uh, Lulu, Long Call Diagonal. So we had three contracts on this Long Call Diagonal. Went ahead and closed out two of them, booked almost 100% profit on those two. And then we left the last one on to see if we could get any more any more movement. Uh, let me bring up a chart of Lulu. And you can see what we did. And, and remember, this is the one where we initially had this downside movement, kind of broke through some of this consolidation here and then bounced up. We actually got short right here, looking for a potential continuation lower. But when this thing started pushing higher, uh, we just bailed and took a took a small loss. Didn't take a full loss or anything, but but bailed early, took a small loss, and then when it kind of pulled back again after it broke out of the top of this consolidation, uh, looked like it was going higher. So we re-entered long, and that worked out well because we just got this explosive move here uh, that allowed us to book uh, almost 100% profit on the first two contracts. We got out of the last one today and booked like 135% profit on that last piece so piece so nice trade in lulu and uh and good good choice in reversing that one uh facebook opening trade we did a pre-earnings long call so again just like i was talking about in google looking for some upside momentum into earnings uh with facebook it's a lower price stock it's a 310 ish dollar stock so uh in this case we did just use long calls and the reason that we're fine using long calls uh, in this situation is because typically going into earnings, you're going to get some elevation in the implied volatility. Now, today, implied volatility just got absolutely annihilated. As we talked about, the VIX is down 7%. So uh, even going into earnings, uh, and we've seen this in a couple other stocks this cycle in JP Morgan, uh, just implied volatility stayed super low going to, into earnings. But let's see if we can get a little pop going in uh, uh into next week before the earnings announcement uh as as price was pulling back here we got long started a push up and then obviously with the sell-off with the tax proposal yesterday uh put us down a little bit and then it popped right back up so i think we're about break even on the trade now yeah we're down down a little bit so if we can still get a little bit of upside momentum uh into early next week could still book a decent profit on that one SPX weekly double calendar. So we had two of those on and uh, we went ahead and closed both of them out, just booked small profits on each of those. Uh, had to close those out with one day to expiration, just needed to get out of those. So closed them out, booked a booked a, just a small scratch profit on both. Here's the last of the long call diagonal in Lulu that I just mentioned, over 135% prof, uh, profit on that one. SPX opened up a new weekly double calendar today. I uh, did this one seven in uh, seven days in the front week, ten in the back. So let's take a look at SPX. So here is that one. Let me move this out here a little bit for you. No, for some reason. There we go. All right, so here's this one. So this was this was pretty centered when we put it on, but the market just kept pushing higher. So now it's moved up a little right of center, uh, but we'll hold this to next week. And uh, probably, you know, unless the market tanks on Monday, if market's kind of stable to higher, we'll probably add a new one of these centered. Just to, We like to kind of double these up, spread out our range on both of them, see if we can book some more profits on that. CMG, that was the closing trade for that earnings iron duck where we booked near max profit. Uh, SPX closing duck, so we closed out a duck today, uh, booked a little over beak profit on this one. Price had run higher with prices just grinding higher all day, so we just went ahead and closed that out, booked beak profit, and uh, and took that one off. So 
Hopefully, if we get a little downside next week, we'll add some more ducks in. Let's take a look at the rest of our positions. Starting with ES, we've got this long put vertical as part of our short delta play just outside of range. Need a little bit of downside to get back in. We've got our short strangle in bonds that is doing well. We're up about 460, 470 since we did our last adjustment there. If we get a little bit of a down move, we'll be over 50% of max profit and we will either close that or roll it. Uh, bonds still have some decent implied volatility, especially compared to a lot of things. You can see the IV percentile at 33, IV rank of 37. So I would not mind keeping a short premium on in bonds for the time being. Apple, this is one of our short delta plays. This one's way out of range. We'll be, we'll be rolling this one into next week. We're in May with 28. Uh, we'll roll that one out to June with 56. Uh, Baidu, so this is a uh, long put diagonal. Whoops, what did I do? Long put diagonal, so we need a little downside in Baidu. This is one where you know had the nice down move, kind of bounced up. So somewhere around here we got short, and it's been kind of grinding lower, but it popped up the last couple of days. Uh, we'll see if we can still get a little bit of a rollover to get out of that one with some profits. Uh, in this case, this one doesn't expire until next week on 5-1. So we've got a little bit of time. We can just get a little bit of a down move. Uh, still have a chance to book some profits there. John Deere, uh, it's, up, it's up a couple percent today. So just out of range of our short call vertical there. DIA, same thing. Short call vertical just outside of range. That's part of our short delta. Speaking of short delta, we are we're about two to one on our short delta versus our theta. So not necessarily looking to add a bunch of short delta yet, uh, but if this market extends higher again, uh, I think it's going to be time to start putting on some short delta. Probably won't jump in with any major bunker type trades, uh, but certainly we'll jump in with some uh, short delta plays like verticals or diagonals to start, and then we'll see where we go from there. Uh, Facebook, I mentioned that one. Goog, I mentioned. IWM, another short delta play. It's a vertical uh, that's a little bit out of range. QQQ, uh, another vertical. This one's in range, up about 80 some dollars since we did our last adjustment there. Uh, I mentioned RUT SMH. So we've got this short strangle that's been adjusted into a straddle. Uh, we're up about 900, almost $1,000 since we did our, our last adjustment. If we get a little bit more downside and back to center, uh, we will be in good shape and probably extend duration to roll that one out. Uh, with SMH, we are in May with 28 days. So Towards the end of next week, we'll be near that 21-day mark where we like to, to roll out to reduce our gamma exposure, our directional gamma exposure. Uh, so we would roll that one out to June. SPX I mentioned, SPY I mentioned, XLK, uh, one more of our short delta plays that's right near the break even. And then Zoom, this is a, a, a long call diagonal looking for a little bit of upside. Zoom doesn't have earnings coming up, uh, but with this one, we're looking, we're really looking how this started to really break out. So when it pulled back, uh, I thought we were going to get a pretty immediate continuation, but it has kind of grinded lower, but then the last few days it's really popped up. So if we can get a little bit of a continuation higher, should be able to book a nice profit on this one. Uh, and we've got a couple weeks here. This one doesn't expire until 5-8. So we'll hold this one right up until expiration if needed. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. There is your update. Uh, for day traders, we'll be streaming Monday through Thursday next week. We'll be offline on Friday. Uh, and we've posted the updated May schedule in the live stream room as well. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend, and we will see you next week.